All right, so uh, <clears throat> my name is Alex Kiss, and uh, I created an app called Vinny. Uh, in a nutshell, Vinny is a VIN scanning application in the used car market to show you the wholesale value of the car, uh, essentially showing you the dealer's cost. Can you step into the light? All right. Um, so the background behind Vinny was I'm originally from uh, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I've never had a car in my life, and um, I moved out to Salt Lake, moved to the suburbs, and needed a car for my family. So I went to uh, autotradercars.com, eBay, and was pretty shocked at the, the nature of the market, the opacity of the data, my backgrounds and financial derivatives, and uh, I built trading platforms for derivative instruments. Um, and what I noticed was that when, when you're going to buy a used car, dealers have all the data and all the information on the cars. So when you actually go to negotiate, you're pretty much at a, at a disadvantage, and it was kind of the classic definition of information asymmetry. So what I developed was a VIN scanning application. Um, Miles, I can do this without your phone, but it's not as sexy. Um, yeah. So essentially, it's, uh, Vinny is a, a play off of uh, a VIN uh, barcode reader, and I took a photo of my own barcode on my car. Pretend to be your car now? Yeah, so you can, you can make that a little bit bigger. This is a barcode. No tricks. So the idea is you're going to, to buy a used car, you're standing in, on the dealer's lot, uh, scanned it, and that's the car. So what Vinny is, and this Vinny price, is essentially showing you the dealer's cost. So we're saying this is, and it's hard to read, but this is based on 902 wholesale transactions. So the key to this is that we signed up as dealers about a year ago. We started accessing the dealer-only wholesale auctions. So we take that data, they transact about 100,000 cars a day. Uh, that was significant in our minds because it's actual transactional data. It's not these arbitrary KBB or NADN numbers. We run our algorithms against that and a whole bunch of other data inputs, and we calculate a VINI price. So that's saying that's what the dealer paid. Essentially, that's the dealer's cost for that car. Uh, the VIN barcode decodes it, so it's a 2010 Subaru Outback. We get the trim level on that. You can add the asking price, so that's essentially saying... Uh, you can make notes on it, so you're saying what the dealer is asking for that. You can add photos on there. You can adjust the miles on there as well. Uh, so our algorithm is, is specific to the vehicles, so you can adjust the miles. Subarus actually depreciate a little bit less over miles rather than condition. But again, you can adjust it exactly to what that dealer's car is showing on the lot. Uh, you can ask for a vehicle history report. So this is actually HTML5. We go out and give you uh, basically a car fax. We charge $4.99 for it. Carfax charges uh, about 39 bucks for that. You, we go out and we grab full specifications on that as well. So quite often the dealers don't even know uh, what's on the car. We give you the retail book values. So we go out at autotradercars.com. So you can say to the dealer, like, hey, man, you're charging more than the auto trader average. Show you Kelly Blue Book and, and ADA as well. well uh, and then what's next is we're going to start connecting to these guys. We're connecting to the financing so you can get pre-approved on our site. You can scan a car. And a couple grand more for that car than you needed to because this is actually the wholesale price. And it reminded me of kind of the travel agent market years back where travel agents had this privileged access and consumers didn't and Expedia came in and kind of leveled that playing field. Um, so we've been live for a couple months now on the App Store so you can download it. We, uh, we've done zero marketing uh, at all uh, or outbound marketing and we're close to about 40,000 downloads. It's a free app. There's no ads on here. We're kind of bucking the trend in the car market. We're not into the lead generation model. We're looking to kind of provide value for users. Um, that's it. I'm going to start out with kind of a hard question. What, what makes your product defensible that other folks can't go build those same relationships and just throw an app on top of it? Right. So there's a couple of different ways. One of it is, um, and interesting enough, I, I followed the innovator's dilemma 
while I was in New York and realized Clay Christensen is actually from BYU. Um, the market isn't really, it's, it's the classic independent coming up from the underbelly and taking on a stagnant market. The used car market has been around, it's been the same way for about uh, 50 years now. And there's no real incentive to innovate. Everyone, it's such a rich gravy train. The used car dealers make on average about 2,500 bucks per sale of a used car. Uh, and the average selling price is around 10 to 12 grand. Uh, so that's a lot of money to go around. So even if you start out as an independent, like KBB did, KBB did a while ago in Edmonds, they slowly start shifting into the pockets of the dealers just because there's so much money to be made. So one, the answer to that partly is the institutionalized nature of the market. And secondly is the data. So our background is in taking kind of really massive, unwieldy data sets and applying algorithms to make a simple solution. Uh, in, the, in the past, it's been financial derivatives. Now it's used cars. Um, it's, it's difficult to take this data. Cars.com, I talked to guys there. They've got a data team of 20 guys that try and cleanse the data and apply algos to it, and they're having a hard time. Uh, and the other part is brand. We're spending a lot of money on branding it pretty soon. Part of the digital marketing agency. And patents and trademarks and all that. Hands up high. Always, always the other guy on the other side of the room. How do you make sure that you maintain your access to that data feed? Because in essence, you're getting a lot of value from a third party, what, which is owned or at least operated by a lot of the auto companies or the reseller retailers. So how do you prevent being cut off from that? Yeah, so uh, one of our data feeds are, or is the wholesale auction market. Uh, and that's, the, that's actually the, the data that's um, the privileged access that we can take as dealers. So right now, we're not violating the terms of use. It's one input into our algorithm, and we're not republishing their data. Uh, and in fact, we're not competing directly with the auctions. We're competing with the auctions uh, constituents who are the, the car dealers. Um, there's no, not a doubt in my mind that uh, the options will eventually come after us, and we've got some, we're building our own kind of machine learn, learning algorithms so we don't need to take their data anymore. We can start calculating it on our own. Um, but I think with any disruptive technologies, I think either the market will adapt, and this is kind of cracking the door open, and it either blows open and people realize they've been, uh, they haven't had access to this data for a while, uh, or we get shut down. So. I think it's, it's pretty binary. How long has it taken you to get to where you are now? Uh, we from the beginning of your idea. Right, so from, it started out as a uh, kind of a napkin idea, I would say June of last year. Um, signed up as a dealer, started taking the data. It's, it's taken us, it took us about four to five months to really uh, build some cleansers in that data and build our algorithms. And then the rest was spent building out the app. And, um, when we launched, we expected just a couple hundred downloads, so we thought we would use that as our beta test, and it didn't really work out that way, so now we've been scrambling in the last six weeks to really shore up our back end, and now we're finally just about to do a marketing push, so um, probably pretty close to 11 months from start to finish to when we can do a marketing push. Not too shabby. On your year. No salary, though. Uh, uh, who, uh, if you could disclose, who, who provided your seed round? Uh, so that came out of New York. It was kind of a friends and friends round. So uh, we've got a lot of contacts, kind of hedge fund traders, uh, institutional traders, guys that um, would be the classic definition of dumb money. Um, so not strategic. So they just have a lot of money laying around. So we, we closed 500K in a couple of days in New York. Um, fortunately, not, not too much interest out here in Salt Lake. I've been out here for a couple of years now. Trying to jumpstart the scene out here, so we'll see if we get some welcome guys on board. I hope you do. Um, any of yeah, Okay. Besides the uh, Carfax uh, sales, what is the other money revenue? Right. So we're starting to realize that um, we want to move out from, from just being on the transaction side to getting involved at a higher level. So the insurance companies are now coming to us to partner with us, and also the financing as well. So that's where there's about 45 million used cars sold each year. It's not very cyclical. Uh, there's 1.6 billion spent in insurance premiums. So the idea is to get in the bed with insurance providers and also the financing guys, providing data to the consumers. If they want to follow up and take out a policy or uh, take on financing, they can do that separately. 
but that's essentially the revenue generation. We get paid for closed deals on that end. Um, Scott, let's get you plugged in. Great role. As Can I you use your were, same thing you got going on there through phone? Is that for yeah, lightning? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. Well, that's Alex. That's lightning. Yeah. Perfect. That's all okay, so while those guys are getting hooked in, <coughs> this is a, uh, a tip jar, but tonight it's going to collect some business cards. And we have some awesome Microsoft products in the way. Thanks to Tony. Um, well, it's a trip to Redmond to meet Bill. No, to meet uh, <laughs> who do you want to meet? It'll be Steve now. It'll be Steve.